G'day guys, back with the Circle, and in this episode of Getting Started in Horus Heresy, the series you all love, I hope, we're going to look at the Legion-specific Terminators, because, well, last video I did on the subject, I looked at basically Cataphractyl Tartarus, which one is better bang for your buck, and tried to go through each Legion one by one and say, you know, this Legion gets more bonuses for this or that, perhaps look at this. Well, a lot of people were requesting specifically to cover the Legion specific Terminators that are unique to them. And I'm going to do that today. But first thing I want to point out is I wanted to wait until the next Horus Heresy Black Book, Book 9. So I'd have Dark Angels Deathwing and Night Lords Atramenta. Because neither of those exist, I've just put them on here for now. I don't really have a place for them in this chart, which I will explain in a moment. So I've just picked two slots that may suit them. Anyway, what is the chart? Well, effectiveness up the top, so left to right. The least effective units are on the left, the most effective on the right. And value for points, least effective value for your points at the bottom, most effective at the top. Where to begin? Well, let's start with the worst and work our way across, shall we? The Emperor's Children Phoenix Terminators are the worst. Are they bad? No. But, none of these other Terminators rely so desperately on getting off things like charges. The Emperor's Children are a one-note unit. They need to charge, and they need to win the combat or draw the combat. There's no other options, because they're going down to AP3 weapons. They are... They're just rough to play, guys. That's all it comes down to. They're expensive. Yeah, they're weapon skill 5, but so many of the other Terminators you see here are weapon skill 5. So, it's no achievement. In a 1v1 with something like the Eben Keshig, they're... They're going to lose. <laughs> There's just no two ways about it, unless they're getting off the charge. And whilst, yes, they do have Tartarus armor, they are faster because of it, this is a unit which needs the charge and has no method of overwatch, no ranged weaponry. So the only thing they can do is combat. And there are other units here which are combat oriented, which do it better. And because of the reason, the fact, that you have to pull off those charges. They've just got to be bottom of the list. Now, again, doesn't mean they're terrible, but compared to what everyone else has, they're just not as great. Of course, also down the bottom of the list, the Sons of Horus Justerian Terminators. Basically, they've gone through a few iterations, points-wise. Um, they started out, I think, at 75 points for a two-wound Terminator. Yikes. Well, they're better now, and I can't put them very high on the list because essentially you're getting weapon skill 5, 2 wound terminators, and that's all you're getting over regular terminators realistically. Um, they get a few perks from being Sons of Horus, yes, but overall there's no real reason to take them over regular terminators, apart from the fact they can take a multi-melter as their sort of special snowflake weapon. I, I don't know, I think they're really cool models, and I do encourage people to take them, but rules-wise, they're not enough superior to regular Legion Terminators that I go, ooh, good value. And when it comes to other Legion Terminators, I'm like, they're gonna die. <laughs> All right, let's step across one. Down the bottom, again, bad value for points. The Space Wolves Legion Viragia Terminators. Hmm. Essentially, Legion Terminators. But they're all sort of priced about what I'd expect for two wound models, not for single wound models. It, it's rough. Um, yes, they all have access to frost weapons. No, I don't believe they have access to great frost weapons. It's a bit debated, but... The wording, I think, is pretty clear. Uh, yeah, they're scoring. 
but ranged war gear wise they don't have many good options and a lot of like the counter attack things like that they might get um regular space all terminators can get i think the big problem with Raga is that they're in cataphracty this is the sort of unit that really needs tartarus to excel uh, getting into combat causing wounds sweeping through getting into the next combat quickly that's such a trait of tartarus and the fact that the Varagia just don't have that, yeah, it's rough for them. The big thing that hurts them is really, they're just too expensive. They're worse value Sons of Horus, Justerian. But they have a little bit more flexibility thanks to being Space Wolves and having a few special Snowflake weapons like Frost weapons. Alright, next one up, the Alpha Legion Linnaean Terminators. Value for points? Yeah, they're something like three or four points cheaper. Oh, sorry, more expensive than a regular Legion Terminator, which is good. Uh, close range of the Volkites, they pack a shitload of firepower. But it's not as good as regular Legion Terminators for a lot of the work that has to be done. Uh, Combi Plasma wielding regular Legion Terminators are very good. And I think more value more of the time than Linnaeans. On top of that, Linnaean Terminators are in Cataphracty, again, makes it hard if you're doing things like deep striking, that sort of thing, onto the battlefield, because mm, limited options of what you can do. You basically have to stand still, take whatever comes at you the next turn, such as Vindicator shells, Typhon rounds, that kind of thing, and they'll make your Linnaean Terminators disappear very quickly, even with an Apothecary attached to the unit. So, very middle of the road unit, we'll say. Alright, moving across to the next column, the Blood Angels Crimson Paladins. Value for points and effectiveness, they're very middle of the road again. Um, they're not bad value for points, really, like the chart, I guess, fully suggests. They're actually more in line with the Gorgons. But the problem with this unit is very similar to the Phoenix Terminators, the Varagia, Cataphracty armored unit here. We have a unit that's only effective in close combat, really, apart from the one guy who might have an assault cannon or a heavy flamer. Um, not exactly high numbers. You're never going to see more than five in a unit. That means they're quite brittle, because once you start actually taking off wounds, yeah. Uh, they're not getting bonus attacks for things like additional weapons because of those shields, and those shields are only effective in close combat. They're okay as a unit. I'm not really sure what niche they're meant to fulfill, which kind of sucks because they're quite an attractive model, except from behind. They have the worst looking legs from behind. I don't know what it is, but it's like they've got disco flared pants <laughs> all right the very middle of the road of everything the iron hands legion gorgon terminators i had a person come up to me who will go nameless at act of heresy and asked me what i was doing taking the gorgons i said well they're quite a good terminator unit and he's like no they're not only people who are idiots take those or they're taking them to make a joke I don't know what this person was high on, but it wasn't common sense. For five points more than a regular Legion Terminator, you have access to essentially Tartarus Armored Terminators, who drop an initiative point, but they gain feel no pain. They're scoring, and any shooting that's directed at them, if they successfully involve save against it, an enemy unit within six inches or any unit within six inches, but allies get to re-roll this, has to take a blind check. So, say an enemy unit of, I don't know, World Eaters Tactical Marines with a Chaplain, for example, maybe my friend Dom's army, happens to be shooting at them, causes me to make an involve save because he shot them with a Vindicator. He then fails his blind check on his Terminator, on his uh, tactical squad, and charges my Terminators. And he's now fighting me with a blinded squad. That was very good for me. Made it a lot easier to survive the horrible onslaught of all those tacticals. 
it was something like 30 attacks from like eight guys. It was ridiculous um, with a chaplain boosting them. They tanked it completely. So what's not to love? Also, Cyber Familiar on the Squad Sergeant, Thunderhammer on the Squad Sergeant, you take Lightning Claws on them to mince units. They're only Initiative 3. Uh, as I said, they dropped that Initiative point, but they're scoring. Um, they're not held back by the weaknesses of Cataphracty. They don't have all the buffs of Tartarus either, but for 5 points more than regular Terminators, they're fantastically good units. And being Iron Hands, they're extra tough. This is one of the few times where I'm like, yeah, you know what? Worth it over regular Terminators. Plus, one of my favourite things to do, special weapon option for them, is to take a Graviton gun on every five guys. And because they're relentless, they can move and fire it. Small Blast, Haywire, you can create patches of difficult terrain to slow down units like other Cataphracty Armored Terminators. You can hull point dreadnoughts maybe take one or two generally two i find i've been very lucky with them take two hull points off of enemy contemptors before you charge in finish them off with these guys all around great unit i've got a lot to say for gorgons over a lot of these other terminators now the world eaters legion red butchers an interesting one i think effectiveness is moderate because they're hampered by the fact that they do need to get into close combat. And also, they're in Cataphracty armor, which means they're slow to get to close combat. Uh, they lack ranged firepower, so again, they're quite lacking in that. But the thing is, they are so fucking good at close combat that it kind of makes up for it. You're talking five attacks each on the charge, I believe? on Gorgon Terminators, oh sorry, on uh, Legion Red Butchers, that's a lot of attacks. A damn lot of attacks. Power Axes on everyone, you can have Twin Chain Fists if you like, they've all got Feel No Pain. The only downside is that they can always be hit, I believe, on a 3 plus in close combat, because they don't care if you're hitting them or not, but they also hit everything on a 3 plus, I believe, so... These guys are Primark killers if you use them right. Downside of the Red Butchers, yeah, it's that Cataphracty. Slow to get there, you're not sweeping advancing. Uh, you've got to weather the storm, and yes, you've got Feel No Pain, but unlike Iron Hands, unlike Iron Hands, you don't have that toughness boost essentially, so you can't prevent things like Strength 8 missile launches or anything strength eight from just instant killing them so two wounds yeah great but these guys really struggle to survive when they get focused by that high strength low ap weaponry the cataphractic just isn't worth it i'd love to see these guys just having the option of tartarus so moving on the next row over we have the white scars eben keshik hmm this was a hard unit to place on here, because on the one hand, very good at what they do, which is killing other Terminators. On the other hand, not scoring can't be joined by characters or attachments, unless they have this Karash rule, which just doesn't exist. Um, I don't know if that's an oversight, or just plain retardation of some kind, but Jagged Eye Khan doesn't have the rule. The Master of the Kashig, Chinzar, he doesn't have the rule. Um, I'm not exactly sure why, but yeah, units can't join these guys. It's weird. So not really sure how bodyguard units meant to work when they can't actually bodyguard anyone. Of course, these guys are also not scoring, and they never give away victory points, which yeah, it's handy. Um, quite a few of these units here actually don't score. The Tyrants, Fulman Taris, uh, Eben Keshig... Red Butchers, there's a few that don't score, um, but yeah, their real niche is the fact that they can strike at either AP3 as power swords with their glaives, but you never would because they don't have a shooting weapon, so you just use them as power axes at initiative, but you get no bonus attack. But hey, a charging squad of these guys is 15 attacks, weapon skill 5, so they hit most things on 3s. 
their strength fives, they'll wound most things on threes, and if they move six inches that turn, which they will because you're white scars, then you get re-rolling to wounds of a one. And if they're near a cyberhawk, they'll get to re-roll charge distances. So all these things combined makes them a very good unit getting into close combat and getting stuck in and chopping things down. Very similar is the Death Guard Death Shroud Terminators above them. Now the Death Shroud for me win out. They are scoring. They can come in quite small units. If you only want to take two, you can. That's pretty handy. Um, also, their power sides, not as fast as the Ebon Keshik's Glaives, but they can strike multiple models with them. Instead of uh, using their normal attacks, they can still take a big swing. And it only drops them down by one initiative. And they're an AP2 weapon as well. All that puts them pretty much on par with the Ebon Keshig. I think the scoring, big bonus. But the Death Guard Death Shroud also have Chem Flamers built into their hands. Brutally strong in Zone Mortalis. Or Zone Mortalis. And if it's Zone Mortalis and you're playing with the rules that allow weapons like that to become rending, it's horrific. A Death Shroud can Overwatch, they can run. They're a jack of all trades unit. If you're running things like the Reaping, you can be putting rag grenades into the unit. Very good, very strong unit. Um, right now, we're pretty much at the top end of all the Terminators, so they're up there. Moving across the column, the Salamanders Legion Fire Drakes. You don't have to take them with the shields and hammers. It's what they come with on the models, but they have other weapon options. You can take them with things like combi bolters, but of course everyone takes them because they're a two wound terminator with a storm shield and a thunder hammer. Downsides, cataphracty means they're slow. Uh, they do hit like a freight train. The big weakness for these guys is other terminators though. And I know it seems silly, like how can other terminators be a weakness? Well, like the red butchers, it's strength eight. It doesn't matter if you've got two wounds, if the other guy just instantly kills you anyway. So, the counter for that, of course, is unlike Red Butchers, relying on Feel No Pain, these guys have Storm Shields and three up invols, which is very good. I mean, you're saving two thirds of the dice that come your way. Problem is, how many dice are going to come your way? Red Butchers, for example, if they've all got Chain Fists, well, they will absolutely destroy the Fire Drakes. The Fire Drakes, of course, will destroy them right back. So, mm, who knows there on utility. Uh, the Fire Drakes are a lot worse value for points than the Red Butchers are, in my opinion. Once you kit them out like with Storm Shield, Thunder Hammer, something like 60 points, something ridiculous like that. Um, again, I don't know the points values of every model off the top of my head. I just know sort of the rules. Um, I think that's plenty for me to know, frankly. <laughs> it's too much information in my head already. But yeah, good, very good unit, very strong, very scary. If you see a unit of fire drakes across the table, you do say to yourself, how the fuck am I dealing with that? Which is why they're very much at the top end. Death Guard Grave Wardens. Now, like the Tyrants and the Foreman Taurus who are coming, these guys are a heavy choice. Now, that's important because elite Terminator types can be taken as part of the Pride of the Legion troops choices. And it's only elite Legion Terminators and Legion Terminators, your generic ones, that count in Pride of the Legion. Well, heavy support ones are in heavy support. They can't move from that slot into troops. It doesn't work like that. Now, the Death Guard Grave Wardens are, I'd say, overpowered ever so mildly because they're better on every level than a cataphracty armored terminator and they're basically the same points i don't know if people can hear in the background but my dog's been chewing toys so you've probably heard a lot of pops and squeaks and things like that through the episode um but to go on the grave wardens cataphracty armor multiple shock grenade launches if you charge them it always counts as disordered that's huge that means Red Butchers don't get Rage Bonus for charging. Um, models that get Furious Charge don't get Furious Charge. So it affects a lot of Legions. Uh, 
The Emperor's Children Phoenix Terminators, however, they will get their charge bonus for the spears, but that's it. They won't get any bonus attacks, and that really cuts down their killing potential, and they're going up against the unit which is going to punch the dicks off, because they've got power fists. Um, the Grave Wardens can also take chain fists as options, they can take chem flamers, which is very strong again in Zone Mortalis. Uh, reaping, you can put things like rag grenades on them. However, rules is written, they can't take a power scythe on the champion because he can't upgrade to his power fist, he simply comes with it. And it's a weird quirk of the rules, which is a bit unfluffy, but yeah. Uh, Grave Wardens, fantastic, strong unit, right up the top end. Alright, moving to our last column, the Ultramarine Fulman Terrace Terminators which are clearly nothing like Siege Tyrants, which is why I just coloured some Tyrants blue in the picture on screen. Okay, so what are the Fallen Taurus thing? Well, first off, you're getting a higher ballistic skill version of Tyrants, and their powers scale based on squad size. Just a couple of them, they're middling. You get, I think, five of them, they become quite good. You get seven or more, and they're very good. Uh, getting things like tank hunters, uh, shooting through, ignoring cover saves, I think is one of the things. But anyway, they get three bonus special rules on top of being ultramarines, based on the size of the unit. Downside of this, of course, start killing models and watch what happens to all those special rules. They just vanish into thin air. Not very handy. Um, if you want to equip them with anything decent weapon-wise, war gear-wise, oh... Boy, does it stack up. If you want to make them a squad like Tyrant Terminators, 700 something points for a squad of 10 it is rough. It is really rough. Um, so yeah, sure, you can get access to Cyclone Missile Launch on everyone. Yes, you can practically have Tyrant Siege Terminators, but at what cost? <laughs> it is, yeah, it's huge. I think probably the ideal way to run Formentaris, the more I think about it, is massed autocannons. They're a lot cheaper with Reaper autocannons on everyone than a regular sort of uh, Legion Terminator squad or Legion Heavy Support squad would be trying to get the same level of firepower. Uh, squad of 10 of these, advancing across the board with all those buffs, 20 autocannon shots, They'll eliminate any light vehicle, they'll give Dreadnoughts a hard time, they'll give monstrous creatures a hard time, they'll absolutely mow through things like Thalax, uh, and at the same time be very tanky, being Cataphracty Terminators, chuck Primus Medicae in there, and you have a mobile fire support option. Basically, you just deploy in the middle of the table and just let them take all comers. That, to me, is a very strong unit. Um, I wouldn't use them for any close combat based thing because the best weapon they're basically running around with is power mauls and their ultramarines then get huge combat bonuses. They will get quite a lot of bonuses though from their ultramarine legion special rules, their legionaries are Sardis ultramarine rules, but yeah, wouldn't go chucking them into close combat. Fire support with autocannons is probably their, their niche. Speaking of massed cyclone fire. Tyrant Siege Terminators. For what you get, they're not that expensive. 400 and something points, I think. 420, 450 for a squad. And you can get Split Fire on the Sergeant and Night Vision. Yeah, solid unit. Can take Chain Fists, can take Power Fists. Well, come with Power Fists and Combi Bolters. And Cyclones. And they can fire both the Cyclones and the Combi Bolters. Can't overwatch, aren't scoring, can't be moved to any other force orc slot, but being Iron Warriors, you can get a fourth heavy support slot. So that's pretty strong. Uh, was broken back when they were an elite's choice because people would take Pride of the Legion and take three squads of these as their troops and then put Apothecaries in with them or Primus Medicaes, and they would be ridiculously hard to shift. Um, a good option is always to put a Siege Breaker in with them because the Siege Breaker will give them. Um, tank Hunters, I believe, and they come with Wrecker already on their close combat attacks because they're Iron Warriors. A uh, very good thing is they can never be sort of shot off the board through morale. You can keep shooting at them, they just ignore morale checks from shooting because they're Iron Warriors. 
very strong unit, very powerful. Second only to Thousand Suns Legion Sekhmet Terminator Cabal. Oh boy. Two wound terminators. Level 2 Brotherhood of Psychers. Force weapons on everyone. The only thing they can't do is take heavy weapons, basically. Uh, they can take power fists, chain fists, but they're not getting plasma blast guns and reaper auto cannons. But they've got shredding bolt guns, or shredding combi bolters, so re-rolling to wound. Uh, and they're five points more than a regular Legion Terminator. <laughs> So broken, and they even come with their own right of war, which makes them troops, because of course it does. And it's not just that it makes them troops, because there's pride of the Legion for that. It's, it makes them troops, and on the turn they arrive, they get to reroll saves, involve <laughs> <Both> saves, <laughs> and they can deep strike. It's, no oh man, what a broken unit. The, I, Look, you can counter them. They're not completely and utterly broken, but as far as 30k goes, yeah, they are an OP broken-ass unit. I can't deny it. When they first came out, it was one thing because they were limited in the psychic disciplines they could take, like pyromancy, not very good. But being able to take other disciplines now, like biomancy, iron arm, for example, on a whole unit, Jesus. Um, also, you can go telekinesis cult. For example, take the Telekinesis Discipline, the Telekinesis Cult will give them plus one to Involt saves, giving them three up Involt saves. And, like another unit, which I didn't mention when I covered them, the Death Guard Death Shroud, they actually have a choice of what Terminator armor they wear. They don't have to wear Cataphracta, you can make them Tartarus. You could go Tartarus, Thousand Sun Segment, Telekinesis Cult, and you end up with all the pros of being cataphracty and none of the downsides. <laughs> yeah, not broken at all. Not broken at all. So, one last little thing to cover off on for Legion-specific Terminators. Because I've covered them all. There's no Deathwing yet, so no point talking about those. There's no Atramentar yet, no point talking about those. Where Bearers get nothing, but they've got Galvor back, which more than make up for it. And the Raven Guard have... Dark Talons, or Dark Furies, uh, which, again, pff, makes up handsomely for not having their own Legion Terminators. So, what's left? The Alpha Legion. Their right of war allows them, or one of their rights of war, I believe it's Coils of the Hydra, allows them to take a specialist unit from any other Legion and use it. Sekhmet, very good choice. Tyrants, good choice, seen them both. I've also seen people take Fire Drakes as Alpha Legion. There's a lot of options on this list. Red Butchers, another solid one, but again, losing the Legion bonuses of being Red Butchers and getting that bonus charge with Rage does hurt a little bit. Personally, I think the Sekhmet are a really strong addition to an Alpha Legion force. Um, I wouldn't take... I wouldn't take Justerian. I probably wouldn't take Gorgons. Because without the Iron Hands bonuses, it basically just means the Gorgons are a lot less effective. Uh, I wouldn't take Crimson Paladins. I definitely wouldn't take Varega or Phoenix Terminators. Because again, a lot of the bonuses they have come from being their particular legion. Being alpha legion uh, makes them a lot worse. Formentarius just so expensive. I really think you got to limit it to the top six in the top corner. And even then, the Eben Keshig are a bit... They're not scoring. They're not getting their legion bonuses. They're not getting things like that Cyberhawk hanging around. They're not going to get that re-rolling ones to wound. They're a lot less effective. So, I don't know, food for thought. Personally, if I was taking Alpha Legion and Cause of the Hydra and I wanted to take the most effective bang for my buck, I'd be looking at probably Invictus Suzerain or Osirion Dreadnoughts. Combat equipped Osirion Dreadnoughts are very, very powerful. So. Anyway, 
make with the our circle hope I've explained the effectiveness versus points values uh, for the Legion Terminators what I think are really good ones and of course what I think are really bad ones even then the bad ones are not terrible you're not gonna go losing games just because you took them it's just they don't really have that much going for them Crimson Paladins Linnaean Terminators, Varagia, Justerian, Phoenix Terminators, none of them are terrible. They just don't excel at anything. I mean, they can put out a lot of firepower up close with Linnaeans, for example, or they can be quite devastating on the charge, in the case of Phoenix Terminators or Varagia, but other legions do those particular things better, or other legions do something so well that it just makes them pale in comparison, like... Red Butchers versus Phoenix, I know which way that fight's going 10 out of 10 times. The Red Butchers are going to win it. Same with Crimson Paladins, they versus Red Butchers, 9 out of 10 times, it's going the Red Butchers way. If it's a shooting match, Tyrants, Formentaris, they're going to win against Justerian, Crimson Paladins, Varagia, any day of the week. And in close combat, they're going to give them a fair run as well, especially the Tyrants. The Tyrants, with their power fists, are going to be very deadly. Sure, they're not combat oriented, but they'll do just fine. That's really my summary. You can't go wrong. All the Terminators are fun, some are just better. That's like any unit in the game. Anyway, make with the outer circle. Hope you all found this informative in some way. Hope you didn't mind the dog chewing her toy in the background, but she's too lovable to not let her do it. See you all next time.